Hey guys, this is Joe Metalone, and today we're taking a look at Philtext.com. Uh, this is an app that I developed, uh, and it does what it says right here. It uh, lets you generate JSON datasets for testing or demos or presentations or whatever you might need it for. And it does so without a lot of uh, complicated setup. You don't have to download anything. You don't have to go and generate your data and download it and then use it locally. Uh, you could do that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but this is just a RESTful web API that you can just tap into right from your uh, application. So there's uh, right here on the homepage, we've got an AngularJS example. Uh, so, so you can go ahead and go to the website and learn more about how to integrate this into your AngularJS app. Uh, this is doing it a couple different ways. Um, we've got a jQuery example. And then we've got all the different options. Uh, and there's a bunch of them. I'm going to just show you a few today and uh, show you some of the core uh, uh, functions that are uh, available. So uh, first things first, there is one required uh, option that you need to pass in and that's rows. It's the number of items or the number of rows of data that you want. And the way we work with this is, uh, so we just call filltext.com and we're going to pass in rows equal and then we just say how many rows we want. So if I say rows is 10, I get 10 empty objects because I haven't told it what to put in those objects yet, but there's my objects. Right off the bat, I'm going to add in, sorry, uh, pretty equals true. And that's just going to beautify the uh, uh, the return data so that we can get a look at it just, just for the for the presentation. Uh, there is one limitation. Uh, once you go over a thousand rows, you will get a single object with a key of error and a value of row limit of 1,000 exceeded. Uh, so that is something to be aware of. Now, the way that we populate this with data is we just pass in a key. So my key is name, and then we pass in a value. And if I set the name to zero, or to Joe, I'm gonna get uh, 10 objects with a name key, each having the value of Joe. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this down to five. And let's see, let's, okay, so everything's on the screen there. Zoom out a little bit. Okay, so that's not super helpful. Um, what we could do is we could say, there's there's a built-in function for first name. We can do that. Now we've got uh, five random first names. Uh, and there's a bunch of those. <clears throat> the uh, built-in functions for like shortcuts, uh, names, phone numbers, cities, US states, uh, zip codes, uh, all sorts of ones that you can find on the website. Uh, I'm gonna look at a couple of the more advanced ones really quick. So the first one is random string. And what random string is going to do is it's going to return a random string of five characters. That's the default. Now, if we want more or less than five characters, uh, the way that uh, we pass in a function first is with these curly brackets around it. And then we pass in the function. Now, to pass an argument to that function, we pipe it in. So there's the pipe. And now let's say I want it to be 10 characters long. My argument is 10. So now I've got uh, five objects each with the key of name and a value that is a string of 10 characters long. Uh, so in addition to random string, we have random number uh, and that is going to return. The default is uh, a random number between 0 and 9 and if we want to set a higher limit to that, so if I wanted random numbers uh, between 0 and 20, I can pipe in 20 and now I've got random numbers between 0 and 20. Uh, we also have random number length. So let's say you were making a phone number and you wanted 10 digits, random digits, you could pipe in 10. I believe the default is five. <clears throat> so there's uh, 10 digits for each uh, uh, record there. We can also do, uh, here's a good one, range, random number range. And what you do there is you pass in your minimum 10 uh, or whatever, it could be zero, two, you actually type in the word two. And let's say I'm gonna do, uh, 20. So now I'm going to get random numbers that are between, between 10 and 20 uh, for each of my items. Uh, okay, so that's that. Let's see. All right, so let's go ahead and say we want to build up a, a user uh, uh, data set. So uh, one cool thing is we can start with the ID and we can use the index function. And what that's going to do is it's going to give us an index for each individual uh, record, uh, a one bound index. Uh, so that's good, we got an ID. Let's do first name, first name. Now we got some first names. Let's do uh, L name equals last name. 
And so now we got, you know, we're building up some stuff. And then uh, let's say we've got something specific. Uh, so let's say we, we have a category value. And let's say we need that to be one of something that actually exists. So uh, let's say we've got a 1, a 5, a 6, an 8, and a 12. So what we're doing is we're passing in an array uh, to that key. And that's, that's another function. You pass in the array, and what you're going to get back is a random value from that array. So you can see i got uh, all these categories are being selected from that array. Uh, another one that I, I, I kind of like is phone. So phone equals phone. And you saw earlier we could basically do that with a random, uh, uh, random number length of 10. Uh, but in this case, what we can also pass in, we've got the phone, and that's going to give us a random 10 numbers. We can also tell it to format that. And what we're going to get is a formatted 10-digit uh, uh, telephone string. Uh, so there you go. That's a look at philtext.com. Uh, check out the website. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot more here that you can do. Uh, I, I only built it very recently. Uh, so I'm adding in a lot of things. And, uh, and you can see all the, the cool stuff that's already there. It, it just, it's going to make, for me personally, building out uh, <clears throat> prototype applications a lot easier. Um, so there you go. Uh, philtext.com.